and our land must be healed. We are one year away, we are told, from a horrific world famine. Already the prices of food are two and sometimes three times higher on some uh, product. Over one billion people go to bed hungry every night. Every 3.25 seconds, someone starves to death. And 75% of those are children. And so we live in a world that is so ravished with sin that there must be a healing that takes place in our land. And I'm speaking right here in the United States. We're seeing a record number of tornadoes, killer tornadoes. We're seeing floods that have breaking the records of the 1937 flood. We're seeing such a collapse of our financial system that now our property values have dropped more now than it did during the Great Depression, which went down to 29%. Our property values have now dropped over 31%, and it took 19 years to recover after the Great Depression. We are now say, they are now saying the unemployment rate is higher now than it was during the Great Depression. Now, what is taking place? Well, it's the sins that, are, that we have committed on the land. And now we are beginning to see the judgment of God come upon America. The fire in Arizona has so far cost $43 million. The floods that are taking place through the Midwest are costing $275 million a day. The tornadoes that have ripped through our, our country in one month, we had over 400 tornadoes. It has cost such a vast amount, there is no way to even calculate it. In Bristol, Tennessee, I was talking to a fellow who's heading a crew down there. He said there's $20 million dollars of roofing work alone in Bristol, Tennessee, not counting every other community that's been ravished by these killer tornadoes. And what makes things worse is our stand of our leaders against Israel. The Bible says, I'll curse those that curse Israel and I'll bless those that bless Israel. We had a man come here and speak a number of years ago. His name was Bill Koenig. And he wrote a book, An Eye to Eye. He wrote this, that the, the 10 costliest uh, tornadoes in U.S. history, the 12 costliest hurricanes in U.S. history, three of the four largest tornado outbreaks, and the two largest terrorist events all took place. And these catastrophes uh, occurred the same day or 24 hours uh, of the U.S. presidents, Bush, Clinton, and Bush, applying pressure to Israel to trade land for peace. It's interesting when we begin to put pressure on Israel to get your settlers out of Gaza and turn that over to the PLO. We paid, America paid, you paid, I paid, the taxpayers paid two, an average of $250,000 per settler to move out of Gaza. When the last settler was moved at 5.30 p.m. in the afternoon, at that same moment, a, a tropical storm in the Caribbean began by the name of Katrina. It built in power, and one of the spokesmen, he was a religious leader, had a great national ministry in Florida, he was so against... Uh, Israel proclaiming the land. He had written a letter to the president and said Israel has no rights, more rights for that land than the Palestinians. That hurricane went right over Florida and went right, the eye went right over his church and destroyed his church. And that ministry has never recovered. When a country takes a stand against Israel such as Japan did, Within a matter of days, the tsunami came and just has destroyed the nation of Japan. On May the 19th, President Obama spoke to Israel to go back to the 1967 boundaries, 
Within 48 hours, Joplin, Missouri was hit with the worst tornado in the history of that whole part of Missouri. I have been in Joplin, Missouri so many times. I went to flight school there in Joplin, Missouri. I've been through that town. It was totally destroyed. And then killer tornadoes begin to go all through the Midwest. Now they're predicting the hurricane season is at hand. They're saying there will be 16 major hurricanes and in 165 years since they've been tracking hurricanes, there's only been eight other years that they have ever predicted as many as, as uh, uh, this many hurricanes. What is taking place? Our land is under a curse because of the sins of the people. Now the Bible says in the tribe of Issachar, which were men who understood the times in which they live. If there's ever a time that we need un to understand what's taking place, we need to understand this. We need to understand this is not about global warming. This is not about La, La, La Nina out uh, causing the weather patterns to change. This is about unrighteousness and about God's people turning back to the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen? You know, there's an interesting scripture in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. It talks about in the last days, there will be a signing of a, a peace treaty in Israel. And it will be a, no doubt, an establishment of a land for the PLO. And this absolutely could take place with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and with President Obama in leadership in our country. We are living right now on the verge of this all taking place. And I want you to look with me in your Bibles in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, because here Jesus begins to talk about the things that had to take place before His return. He talked about the fig tree, which is a picture of Israel, how it would begin to bud again, which took place in 1948. And then he made a statement that the generation that saw these things begin to happen, would many of those people would still be alive when the Lord would come back again. And then it begins to say in verse 37, but as it was in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as it was in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away and so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field and one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One of them shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for we know not what hour our Lord doth come. We don't know the very moment, the very hour. But we know we are in the countdown of the coming of Christ. It says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, as it was in the days of Noah. You know, during that time, Noah, he looked and it was so bad he decided he wasn't going to have any kids. And then when he was 500 years old, God spoke to him, and he decided to have kids. How many know that 500 is a little late to start a family in any generation? And so he has these three boys, and he begins to preach righteousness. And he said, there's going to be a flood that takes place. Well, it had never rained in the land. 